ಶ್ರೀಮದ್ಭಾಗವತೇಸರ್ಮಣೀಯದರ್ಶನ ಮಂದಹಾಸರುಚಿರಾನಂಬುಜ ಪೂಜಿ ಸುರನರೋತ್ತಮೇರ್ಮುದ ಧರ್ಮನಂದನಮಹಂ ವಿಚಿಂತ ಧರ್ಮನಂದನಮಹಂ ವಿಚಿಂತ ಶ್ರೀಘನಶ್ಯಾಮ್ ಮಹಾರಾಜನೀ ಜಯ ಅಲ್ಮೈಟಿ ಸುಪ್ರೀಂ ಲಾರ್ಡ್ ಅವರು ಬಿಲೌಡ್ ಕನ್ಸ್ಯಾಮ್ ಮಹಾರಾಜ್ ಪೂಜ್ಯಪಾತ್ ಗುರುಜಿ ಆಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಡ್ಯೂಟೀಸ್ ಜೈ ಸ್ವಾಮಿನಾರಾಯಣ್ ಲಾಸ್ಟ್ ಸಂಡೇ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಡಿಸ್ಕಸ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಮಿರೇಕಲ್ಸ್ ಹ್ಯಾಪನ್ ಇನ್ ಲೈಫ್ ಆಫ್ ಸಂತ ದಾಸ್ ಜಿ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ನಾವು ಟುಡೇ ವಾಟ್ ಎಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾಪನ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಲೈಫ್ ಆಫ್ ವ್ಯಾಪಕಾನಂದ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಹೌ ಶ್ರೀಜಿ ಮಹಾರಾಜ್ give miracle in life of vyapkanan swami sadguru sunil skudan swami wrote an incidents of vyapkanan swami in bhakta chintamani chapter 130 swami wrote two miracles happen in life of vyapkanan swami but in real life there are many many miracles happen in life of swami before what had written in bhakta chintamani i would like to discuss first who is vyapkanand swami how he become a sant and for that first of all one spiritual aspirant from northern india he leave everything behind him his home his relatives his possession everything he renounced and after renouncing all these things he was wandering one place to another one pil- pilgrimage place to another pilgrimage place only to find out a bona fide guru so that that guru can lead him up to the lotus feet of god because his mission his goal his destination is to meet god face to face and for that he only knew that without attaining a spiritual master without a guru nobody can attain god and for that first his mission is to find a perfect guru this incident teach us whatever we have a spiritual goal in our life for fulfilling our spiritual goal we have to meet a perfect a bona fide guru and after accepting his refuge we should obey his each and every command so that by obeying his command we can be able to meet god face to face in life of sitardas he was wandering one place to another only in search of guru but in each and every pilgrimage place whether he was in mathura or in vrindavan whether he was in kashi or in any other place of pilgrimage but he could not find a spiritual master who can lead him up to the god but at one pilgrimage place he was informed that if he could if he want to meet a perfect master or if he want to meet god face to face he will have to meet raman and swami some other spiritual aspirant told him that sadguru raman and swami he was wandering in southern gujarat and he was an incarnation of god himself if you meet him your destination will be or and when sitardas knew about ramanand swami 
not once but many times then he decided to meet anyhow sadguru ramanand swami but when you open the map of india and when you saw that when you see that where is northern part of india and where is gujarat minimum 1000 miles distance between these two places at that time there was no any kind of transfer uh, transformation uh, there is no any kind of transportation service if you want to travel this much distance you have to only one way and that is you have to walk but sitardas had decided in his mind anyhow i want to meet sadguru ramanand swami and for that he traveled barefooted from northern side of india to gujarat when he entered into gujarat many many disciples of ramanand swami told him about ramanand swami how ramanand swami preaching people how he was living his life everything sitardas he did not satisfy only by listening such talks about ramanand swami and for that he asked the devotees of ramanand swami where is his actual place in gujarat then most of the devotees described lodge as the headquarter of his mission ramanand swami's headquarter is lodge where muktanand swami and other 50 saints resides at the time but ramanand swami was not stay at one place because he was traveling in different villages and town so that many many devotees could have benefited and in the same way ramanand swami right now also wandering one place to another to preach satsang to others Sitardas has mission to meet Raman and Swami and for that from lodge when he reached lodge then he was informed that Raman and Swami right now is not here but he was uh he was on uh, and tour on religious tour in different villages so if you want to meet Raman and Swami he would go to another place and by asking one place to another one village to another town to another town sitardas also wandering in search of ramanand swami and finally he listened that ramanand swami was in forani forani is a small village but there are so many disciples of ramanand swami lived there and that's why ramanand swami only to meet and preach satsang to his devotees he went there now sitardas reach in forani but he has great misfortune and unfortunately before his arrival in forani raman and swami before 30 days raman and swami passed away now sitardas knew about this bad news and he became discouraged because he had listen he is the only person who can lead him to meet bhagwan him bhagwan face to face and if he could not meet raman and swami his mission will not be finished sitardas now very very disappointed but still he decided to stay one night over there and at evening at assembly sahajanand swami as a successor of ramanand swami he was preaching the ramanand swami's disciple he was counseling his disciples who had very great grief in their in their heart sitaldas sitaldas has also the same grief but 
he has even much more grief than the others because he had decided to meet god face to face and he had only way that is to follow raman and swami but now raman and swami was not there in forani and so he become discouraged but after becoming disappointment sitardas could not lose his courage he decided not to stay more in forani but travel in search of another spiritual master and for that he had decided to go to dwarka but before that one incident happened in his life as he was he has he had grief in his heart and as he could not meet raman and swami he was praying continually to god for obtaining for attaining another spiritual master this incident teaches us whenever we got any kind of misery any kind of obstacle any kind of disappointment situation in our life at the time never be discouraged at the time we should remember god he will help us he is the best friend of us he will definitely give us the way so that we can relieve from any kind of misery or grief or sorrow he is a source of happiness he is a source of everything and that's why if we forget our way he'll give us the direction even he'll open the another door so that we can enter in another realm this is what his power but we have to remember him at the time of disappointment when we got disappointment when we got discouraging situation in our life mostly we lost our courage but without losing without doing anything without taking even any action or any decision it is our duty to remember bhagwan and continually praying bhagwan our prayer bhagwan is always listening our prayer and he he is very compassionate personality and as his nature is very very compassionate he'll give us something so that we can walk on the on that path and finally we will reach our destination now situl das is praying bhagwan and bhagwan is actually in front of him but he did not know about that even though sitar das who was sitting in front of bhagwan swami narayan but as he had no knowledge about bhagwan he did not meet any spiritual master so that he could not understand that bhagwan is even in front of me but as sitar das was a perfect spiritual aspirant spiritual seeker so that bhagwan had decided now in his mind i have to give my eternal knowledge to this person and for that sahajan and swami who was now the head of fellow uh, head of this fellowship of uh, raman and swami sahajan and swami asked this unknown person he asked where what do you want from me sitar das and where are you going to then sitar das was surprised in listening these words because he did not give his instru- introduction to anybody in forani then how how can this sajan how can sajan and swami knew my name this is surpri- surprising thing for sitar das but without wasting his time sitar das said i am sitar das from northern india and i want to meet ramanand swami and as i knew that ramanand swami was not here he was passed away before my arrival and so 
I decided in my mind to leave this place next morning. Then Bhagwan asked him again, Do you really want to meet Raman and Swami? Then Sitadar said, Yes, I want to meet Raman and Swami, and that's why I am coming here, walking thousand miles. Maharaj asked him, If you want to meet Raman and Swami, but for that, you should do what I say. Sitadas agreed. He said, If you meet me, Raman and Swami, then I am doing everything what you said. I am ready to do everything. Bhagwan Swami Narayan, the most compassionate personality in this world, he explained glory of Bhagwan in the assembly, and after that, the next morning, when the post funeral ceremonies according to our Hindu ritual. The great and huge assembly for that gathered in Farani and in that assembly Bhagwan Swami Narayan known as Sahajanan Swami who was the successor of Ramanan Swami after consoling the devotees of Raman and Swami. First, Sahajan and Swami indicate his finger towards Sitardas and he signed him for coming near him. Now, when Sitardas came near to Sahajan and Swami, Sahajan and Swami asked him, Now, this is your time to meet Raman and Swami. If you really want to meet Raman and Swami, then you should chant this divine mantra, Swami Narayan, Swami Narayan. And this, is, this was the first moment, this was the very first time Bhagwan Swami Narayan himself released his own mantra, own divine mantra, Swami Narayan. And Sitardas repeatedly chant Swami Narayan, Swami Narayan. And within a few seconds, he got Samadhi. Sitardas went in Akshardham in Samadhi. There he saw a mass of divine light. And in middle part of that divine light, Sahajan and Swami, to whom he was right now watching in front of him in Farani, the same clothes, same ornaments, the same figure, sitting in, in the middle of Aksar Dham. There are countless millions of divine personalities, divine muktos, who are worshipping Bhagwan Swami Narayan in Aksar Dham. There, the amazing thing is that Raman and Swami, who on this earth are Guru of Sahajan and Swami, in Akshardham, he was a standing, folding hands before Bhagwan Swami Narayan, Sahajan and Swami. Sitardas, by seeing this scene, he became very amazed. And in Akshardham, in Samadhi, Sahajan and Swami told him, This is Raman and Swami. If you want to meet him, now you have a chance to meet Raman and Swami here in Akshardham. Sitardas asked Raman and Swami, Swami, I have listened about you. You are an incarnation of God Himself. And for that, I have mission, I have destination, I have my goal in life to meet God face to face and that's why I traveled thousand miles to meet you but it is my misfortune so that I could not meet you. So please grace me so that I can have darshan of Bhagwan. Then Ramanand Swami explained him 
glory of sahajanand swami who was the supreme personality of godhead and he was right now on earth deliver his sermon in forani in the assembly as well as in aksardham he was sitting on throne divine throne sitardas understood this glory of bhagwan swami narayan and in aksardham he desired to worship all those muktas and when he uh, when he thought uh, when he was thinking that i am uh, i wish to worship all these muktas right now but the another question uh, arise in his mind that this is the countless millions of muktas and if i worship one by one then how much time it require but if is there any another way to worship all those muktas at the same time then i could follow that way then he asked bhagwan and swami narayan bhagwan gave him the way he said you do one sankalp you should do one thought you should you should have one thought in your mind that if this bhagwan swami narayan is the supreme personality of god he is the cause of causes he is the supreme god then it may uh you should think about uh, you should think like that i have a uh, many many and millions of forms so that i can worship these muktas at the same time when siddhas create this thought in his mind at the same time he had a uh, millions of forms in aksardham and with these millions of divine form he worship each and every mukta at the same time after worshiping these muktas he came back from samadhi to forani in forani he was sitting he was sitting in front of bhagwan swami narayan now he came back from samadhi and opened his eyes and explained what he had experienced in samadhi in aksardham he explained the glory of sahajan and swami to everybody and finally he accept refuge of bhagwan swami narayan and he prayed to bhagwan please give me an initiation and always keep me with you i want to become your disciple then bhagwan swami narayan at same time gave him an initiation and gave him a name vyapkanand swami now sital das become a saint of bhagwan swami narayan as vyapkanand swami this vyapkanand swami's divine incident written in bhakta chintamani and to for for glory of vyapkanand swami sadguru niskudan swami rat in bhakta chintamani धन्य सत ते व्यापकानंद जन सुखदायी जगवंद त्रिश सत गुणे ते तो शोभे काम क्रोध लोभ मान क्षोभे व्यापकानंद स्वामी ही हैड अटेन ऑल थर्टी एट्रीब्यूट डिस्क्राइब इन स्क्रिप्चर्स फॉर अ संत he has attained this is his main attainment after attaining god himself now vyapkanand swami according to commands of bhagwan swami narayan he was traveling one place to another to preach the glory and greatness of bhagwan swami narayan to preach bhagwan swami narayan's divine message to the people Once upon a time Vyapkanand Swami was traveling from one village to another with only a one saint once he forgot the way 
and took a way took a path of jungle in the jungle it was a night and he forgot the way so only remembering bhagwan swami narayan he was walking in the jungle there is no any guide there is nothing and after crossing many many hardships in the jungles at least after two days he could cross the jungle and reach the another town but he was now in another state the ruler of that state was muslim king not doubt some hindu people lived there but this is a muslim state he did not knew about it but his mission is to preaching bhagwan swami narayan's divine message to people and for that he entered into into that town on the another hand in that town in that state the king was muslim but one of his minister was a hindu vanik now one time that vanik a minister of that king he was suspected by king for any misdeed in his in his laws but actually vanik was a pure and pious person he had not committed any sin he had not committed any fault but as he was suspected the king commanded his army to arrest him now the vanik is in prison and the king commanded to release vanik only for one condition if vanik could pay 10 million rupees within a month only for that he will be released now at that time you just think at that time rupees is even more valuable than today's dollar so it is not possible to collect 10 million rupees at that time but as vanik had the, had to pay this much penalty to the king and if he could not pay this much penalty then the condition is that he would not send to death but he had to change his religion he will have to become a muslim and for vanik this is not a good thing he accept death not to become a muslim this is his determination now after coming back from prison one of his wealthy businessman friend he took responsibility and after having bail vanik came out from prison and to collect 10 million rupees he had sold out his house he had sold out all of his furniture all of his belongings his ornaments jewelry everything his property everything he had sold out but still he could not have this much amount not only that but he had even he begged some amount from his friends and relatives but as this amount is very high he could not collect 10 million rupees and finally he thought that i could not collect this much amount and if one month is passed in this way then i have to change my religion my hindu religion and i will have to become muslim and it is better to die than to become a muslim and deciding this one day 
now he is ready to commit suicide and for that he come out from the town and outside of the town there is one small shivji temple he came there he thought in his mind before committing suicide let me go to this mandir and pray to god if god will help me this incident preachers whenever we have any kind of misery first and foremost we have to pray god he will definitely help us when he went to that mandir and while doing pradakshina he was loudly crying because he had no any other way than to commit suicide he was praying continually god please god give me any way so that i can save my life and after some time he saw that two sons they, they were coming towards the mandir and these two sons were no anybody but vyapkanand swami and another his companion son now vanik becomes happy in his heart that before committing suicide before my death i could at least meet such a pious son then he bowed down to sant uh, vyapkanand swami and crying loudly and he was praying to vyapkanand swami please save me then vyapkanand swami asked him what is your situation please narrate me your story what is your grief what is your misery then that one ek explain everything to vyapkanand swami then vyapkanand swami gave him some counsel and then vyapkanand swami said don't worry about it bhagwan swami narayan is the most compassionate god he is the supreme god and he definitely will help you but for that you should right now chant bhagwan's divine mantra swami narayan vanik was chanting repeatedly swami narayan swami narayan swami narayan vyapkanan swami said not only this but you should accept his refuge and if you have his refuge nobody not only a person any person of this world but not any another like yamdut after the death they could not disturb you they could not even touch you but for that you should have to refuge you should have take you should have take refuge of bhagwan swami narayan and you should follow each and every code and conducts prescribed by bhagwan swami narayan so that you will be saved you will be protected by bhagwan himself now the vanik is ready to follow the words of vyapkanand swami now on the another hand bhagwan swami narayan now bhagwan swami narayan was thinking in his mind this vanik has from faith in words of my son vyapkanand swami and he was obeying his command so it is now my duty to protect him and bhagwan swami narayan took a form of one of a wealthy foreign businessman now he with his two or three secretaries he entered to that state and bhagwan in the form of that great businessman he took away to that vanik's house he did not meet that vanik but bhagwan in the form of foreign business uh, business person he made the that another wealthy person who had take responsibility who was a friend of that vanik bhagwan met him he paid 10 million rupees to him 
and took a receipt bhagwan how he compensated bhagwan took this receipt of 10 million rupees and hand over it to that vanik so that vanik will be re- released from his punishment still vanik did not knew that this is bhagwan himself but bhagwan gave him darshan as divine form as bhagwan swami narayan and so that that vanik could understand that bhagwan swami narayan himself came here to protect my life he had paid 10 million rupees instead of me this is what this is what one miracle happened when the vanik abe uh, bhagwan swami narayan one of the great sant vyapkanand swami now in uh, at another time after completing this incident vyapkanand swami along with his companion sant he travel and leave this state and travel to another they reach in budelkhand this is a middle uh, st- central indian state now there santo always stay outside from the village then did not stay at night or lived in any village mostly they stay outside from the village there one brahmin very pious brahmin came this uh, brahmin saw this pious santo and he decided in his mind to invite this santo for a lunch brahmin talked and that brahmin uh, saw his desire to feed that santo vyapkan swami asked about his caste and everything his financial situation and everything then after vyapkan swami said we are ready to took a lunch to our home then that brahmin become very happy and he said i will come back i will come back to bring you to invite you at time uh, at a lunch time then he went to home and prepare everything now food is ready and the time is also near to 11 now that brahmin came back to santo and he brought santo to his house he worshiped santo he prostrated before santo and after that now santo is ready to ready to take their lunch and for that that brahmin saw santo just before a moment santo could start their first meal that brahmin's son he had only one son and he passed away now the controversial situation arises for a brahmin if the santo knew about death of my son they could not eat and if without eating they leave my house i will have to suffer for many many sins that that is not good for me then finally after thinking many times in his mind that brahmin explain the situation to santo then vyapkan swami told him that is not possible go to your son uh, go to your son and speak swami narayan mantra in your uh, in your son's ear he was just sleeping he was not die that brahmin said no swami i have checked not twice but thrice i have checked he was not 
in body but swami say you go and chant this swami narayan mantra your son was living brahmin follow vyapkanand swami's words and when he chant swami narayan mantra near to the dead body of his son after a few second his son just as somebody after sleeping got up in the same way son got up this is surprising for that brahmin and his family members brahmin understood this is a divine power of this santo and then becoming very very happy he prostrated before vyapkan and swami and said swami you have saved my son but vyapkan and swami said this is not my power this is the power of bhagwan swami narayan and then vyapkan and swami explained the glory and greatness of bhagwan swami narayan to that brahmin and brahmin become a satsangi or devotees of bhagwan swami narayan this is what miracle happen in the life of vyapkan and swami how merely by his words brahmin's son alive again this is the power of words of sant we have also the same spiritual master the same ekantik sant we have if we follow his word we will definitely not only save our soul but we will definitely meet god himself in this way sadguru sri nishkunan swami explaining the glory of bhagwan's divine power bhagwan's divine mantra and bhagwan's one of the great sant vyapkan and swami concluding this 130th chapter of bhakta chintamani shri ganeshyam maharaj ni je श्रीपतिम श्रीधर सर्वेश्वर भक्तिदर्माज वासुदेव हरे माधव केशव कामद कारण स्वामीनारायण नीलकंठम भजे श्रीगणश्याम महाराज नीज